Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at Can This Marriage Be Saved video podcast. I'm Rifka. I'm so And we're founders of the Marriage Restoration Project. We work with couples all around the globe to help keep couples together and happy with our no blame, no shame communication strategies and intensive marriage retreats. Today, we'd like to talk to you about a big fat lie. And what is that big fat lie? It's actually not so funny, but we want to talk to you about the lie of temporary separation. Trial separation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great one. A lot of people tell me, call me and they'll say, yeah, my therapist uh, suggests that we do a trial separation. Yes. For some reason, advising couples to do a trial separation is one of the biggest myths, lies, strategies that most Unfortunately, most therapists working with couples advise, and we do not advise it. We, yeah. it's, I think it's just like, it's just like you're magically hoping that if you do a trial separation, you know, a few months you'll want to get back together or you'll fall in love again. And that's really, really hard. And we're going to share with you three reasons why we do not align with that recommendation at all in our approach to working with couples. And we haven't found it to be helpful. You know, maybe there's an off chance you're out there and you are in the middle of a trial separation and you are finding it to be helpful. And that's wonderful. But as a rule, it's not something that Shlomo, who is the marriage counselor, advises his couples to do. Right. Right. And we'll share with you three reasons why he really doesn't advise that as a course of action. So before we get, get into the meat of this, we want to ask you to please like and hit the bell notifications on our channel so that way you get notified as soon as we drop another video and please engage in the comments and in the like button so that way other couples can get help and get access to our content. That would be hugely appreciated um, because really our mission is to help more and more families out there with this very essential information. So why is nobody talking about this? Why is every therapist out there working with couples advising trial separation when it just gets too hard? I can't really answer that question. I don't know why. I don't know why they do it. Um, I can tell you that a lot of couples therapists—they're not necessarily seeing things the same way that we are from the paradigm that we're coming from. And a lot of couples therapists aren't really trained in couples therapy. Even they, you know, they have one one class from their masters that they needed for their license, and they're doing the best they can. And I'm sure that they're really working hard. But unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily uh, not effective if you don't have a specialty. Uh, but even more than that, I, I think there are many people out there that don't really see, they don't necessarily value marriage, that it's something that uh, needs to be worked on or try to be saved. It's just, you know, if it works out, it works out. If not, you find somebody better. It's almost like, yeah. you know, a car or a computer. Every few years you get a new one, right? So even though it was expensive. Right. There are disposable society. So you don't have the value of a relationship that a lot of a lot of people, other people who are probably watching this channel do. So number one, let's start off with a premise. One, the f- number one reason why it doesn't work is that we believe that relationship issues need to be dealt with in the context of the relationship. That means that if you have a problem in your marriage, going to individual therapy or doing something else and both people who work on themselves and spending time on their own is not necessarily going to solve the problem. It actually might make it worse. You mean I can't just go like on a silent meditation retreat to work on our problems? No. <laughs> <laughs> or go to Cabo with a well, bunch it would, of ladies. It would stop the communication problems, I guess. That's you know, true. Uh, <laughs> Instantly, uh, overnight. But, <laughs> but, you know, I would say you need to do the work as a couple. You need to do the couple's work. So kind of distancing yourself further. And then even in theory, if you do the couple's work, and I've worked with couples who are already separated, who are not living together, and we're doing the work together, and it's definitely helpful. But... Living with your spouse on a day-to-day basis, you're never really going to know how it works. So living with your spouse on a day-to-day basis, dealing with the regular triggers, and then being able to see that you can have a different reality, not only is that it's going to give you the encouragement that your relationship can be better. So the number one reason not to do a trial separation is that you need to work on the relationship within the relationship in the circumstances of the relationship to see if the relationship could get better. Not separate to see if it can get better, but work on it first to see can we make the relationship better under the similar circumstances that we're already experiencing right now so are you saying that the same fights 
the same problems, the same conflict that's actually happening all the time in real time. That's precisely the things that they should stick around for. Well, they need to learn better skills and ways to deal with it. But if they're not living together, they're not going to have those opportunities. Those experiences, right. So that's great. We can go, like I remember, you know, I had a couple I was working with. So they, you know, they went out on a date once a week and it was great and they had a nice time. But, you know, what will happen when they move back in? Are they going to be able to maintain the connection? I mean, it could be that they would. I mean, they did in the end. They got, they got back together. But, um, you know, many couples, it's just, it's hard, to, it's hard to really know. Is this going to work? Is this not going to work? So, um, so you, know, you almost need to stay in the mud a little bit longer, right? With the right strategies and the right help to be able to make it through so that a child separation isn't ultimately needed. Right. And we're talking about, we're not talking about months and months of therapy. I'm talking about, you know, the way that we work with couples is we know the couples are in pain. They want answers. They want an intervention. You know, we Couples that come to our two-day retreats, they're already in a different place by the time they leave. They have an idea of whether they can, whether this relationship is going to work. It's a lot less investment of time and energy but just taking those two days, see, giving the marriage a chance. Obviously, not everything is fixed. You have to keep doing the work. But uh, it's a short way to, and, and uh, I would say it's, it's much more affordable than spending uh, months of rent. Uh, on a second place. On a second place. So that, infu- that quick infusion of a new way to be together. Clarity and skills. Is what and, is needed. Yeah, and that, that will do the job. And then either you, you make the commitment to work on it or you just... Are you, I mean, if you choose to part ways, you part ways. But it's much more effective than just giving each other space. And I know it's probably not as exciting as, you know, going to talk about the marriage problems with a bunch of girlfriends in Mexico or going to an individual therapist to complain about our spouse. And we'll go into that in the next two, yeah. the next two points about trial separation. But it isn't as exciting. However, it's what's needed to get the relationship to work. Yeah. One other thing that, that num- number two, I would say, what, the number two reason why child separation is just a recipe for disaster is that what I have seen in couples who have gone, who have separated and then done the work, even though we came really close to getting back together, they got cold feet. Why? Because it's one thing if your relationship is struggling and you're committed to being together and you're working through it and you're not going anywhere. But once you've opened the door and once you've left, and even if it's gotten better, well, if I go back, is it going to really be better? What if we go back to the same old situation? You know, once I'm back, I can't leave. I mean, you could leave the second time too, but there's almost like that feeling that like I'm that cold feet. And I've seen that unfortunately. I remember one couple where the, the wife really wanted the husband to come back, and he almost did, and he just he just got cold feet. He was too afraid. But if he would have stayed there, like he would have worked on it, and it could have been. So you're saying they permanent. already had the outlet, they already had the plan, they already had the apartment. The plans were already set and they were living it, right? right. So it was easier. We get, we're a victim of circumstance. It's e- like... Nobody wants to change. So once you've made the change to leave, you're not going to want to make the change necessarily again. to get back. Right. Um, it's so, much, much so harder. So it's much harder. I have seen it happen. I've seen people move back. Um, but I've also seen a lot of people that could have moved back, but it's just they didn't have the, the, the courage and to be able to do it. They didn't mm. have it within them. Yeah, that's tough. And, and that's really unfortunate because if they never left in the first place... They would be still be probably still be together in, in a thriving relationship, and now they're divorced, and you know their child has to deal with it. It's, it's sad. It's really sad. So, again, just doing it, it's 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 the next way out. And then you saw that you could do. It. Like I never thought I could actually leave. Like I actually left, and like once I feel like I've done it, that's that's a real hurdle for a lot of people that they don't really think they're ever going to leave. Once they have the courage, the courage to leave, then. Yeah, so it's much harder to come please, back. if your therapist is advising you to have a trial separation, please share this video with them and explain what we're suggesting from this totally alternative relational, we call it the relational paradigm in our, in Imago therapy. It's a completely radical shift and perspective because we're all about the relationship, the space between you, um, as opposed to what's called the individual paradigm where you know, the therapist has one patient that they're seeing, so they have to give that patient advice. Right. We'll do another video about and, it. Yeah. And but, even if you are, I mean, even if your therapist is working with both of you and, you know, it's just not working. I mean, again, if you have, if a person has a life-threatening disease, are they just going to go to one doctor and they say, okay, you have two months to live. Okay, I'm just going to just drop dead, you know, God forbid. No, you go to get a second opinion and a third opinion because your life is important to you. 
But for some reason, the marriage, all because some, someone tells us our marriage, marriage doesn't, isn't, isn't going to work, then we just, we take that for face value and we, we don't make an effort to, you know, yeah. go to a second person. You know, not everybody is going to be qualified. Not everybody's going to be the right fit for you. Not everyone's going to be the good messenger to help you be able to repair your relationship. So, um, you're going to want to do whatever you can to make it work if your relationship is important, not just to take one person's advice and say, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's just send it. And we'll do another episode on how to know if the therapist, if your therapist is right for you and your marriage. And we'll do a, an episode on how to find the right couples therapist for you. So, Shlomo, what yeah. would be the third big fat lie about trial separation? Um, I would say the third, the third one would be self-care and the importance of taking care of yourself and focusing on yourself. Um, look, I believe people do need... I would say people do need space. People do need elements of space. And there's ways to give space in the relationship. Um, and I can't say there's never any situation where one person maybe need to just like go away and like deal with their stuff and then come back and they were ready. But most of the time that doesn't happen. So the, the odds are, you know, it's not, a, it's not a good idea. You're kind of setting yourself up for, to, you know, let's say pretty bad odds that you're going to be able to reconcile after the trial separation so, yeah, if you need time to do work on yourself, you can continue doing work and, and still doing work on a relationship together and stay stay in the confines of the house. So are you saying that self-care is a myth? That all this business about self-care, is that wrong? Well, self-care, you have to take care of yourself because you have to have a healthy self to be in a relationship with someone else. If you don't have a self, healthy sense of self, if you don't have the proper boundaries... You can't be in a relationship with two people if you're not a person. So you do need to take care of yourself. But at the same time, self-care become, becomes selfish, meaning it becomes all about me. And what's best for me and my life and my goals and what's going to make me the... And you're just, not, you're just not like helping me become like the best person. I'd be better off with someone else. And that's, that's kind of... Unfortunately, a lot of people I, I hear from people who have gone to, you know, to some of these workshops or treats that are not necessarily responsible in terms of the relationship and the other fac facets of the person's life and says looking in, in a bubble and they think yeah well this person's wrong for you because they don't support your growth and they're not supporting this and not supporting that instead of encouraging them number one to, to talk about it with their spouse to work on it with them or to understand how maybe the issues they're dealing with in the relationship is what they actually do need for self-growth i find that people who if you really are a self-actualized individual you're going to be a non you'll be non-judgmental. Um, you're not going to look down on people. You're going to be accepting of the situation and 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 see what you can take from it. So even if you feel like your spouse is holding you back, a real person who really did their self-growth is going to be able to sit with that and have compassion for the other partner. Maybe they're not as developed in personal or interested in personal growth, but you're not going to judge that partner negatively because you've done your work and you're able to realize this is another person. And and we believe in Imago that the that the issues you're dealing with in the relationship, it, that's the real work. That's the, I, like, I always like to call it the final frontier, that the relationship work is, that's the hardest stuff. Because, yeah, I can go off and, and go on some retreat and have a great time and meditate. And, you know, like, that's really easy. That's really, that's pleasurable. But or even to do my own emotional work, it feels good. I let out my, you know, it's very cathartic. But to have to deal with somebody who's, Pushing your buttons and you know, getting you in just the way that it hurts, and that you're like you know, stuck with them in your house, and it's like you have to figure out how to make it work, and you have kids, and you know that's annoying, that's hard, that's frustrating, that's really difficult. If you could, you need to be able to, that is the real work, because not only is it just you have to deal with the challenges and accept life as it is, but those are the very issues. If you begin to become introspective, and that's what we find in this work. The more you become conscious of why your spouse bothers you, you start realizing, oh, this is my baggage and I got to deal with it. And people think that I did all my childhood work already in individual therapy and then they get into marriage. Like, I didn't realize there's so much that's getting triggered in my marriage from my childhood that I haven't even dealt with. So this is really where the real work, if you really want to do self-growth. And look, if somebody decides they, they know they want to out the relationship, that's their prerogative. But at least they, they're not just running away because they think like, this is just going to be better for me. They're really taking a look at the situation and they're making a conscious decision. Do I want to do this work or not? As opposed to blaming it on the other person and saying, you know, you're just beneath me. Like, you don't want to grow. I've done all this work. 
you're not emotionally intelligent. Um, Guys, you know, I'm is, beyond you. You know, maybe ten years a, ago we were good for each other, but now like um. This is such a major, major point, and I hope you guys are taking notes, really, because the idea of toxic positivity and self care and self growth is so prevalent in our society. We have so many people that are leaving their marriages, going, "I'm just much more advanced and developed than my spouse." And if you want to read more about it, Shlomo wrote an article for Huffington Post called "How Self Growth Destroys." destroyed my marriage, I believe. And get a read it, really let it sink in because we have so many people that come to us saying like, well, I, you know, I thought I had done all this self growth work. I had been in therapy for years and, you know, it's my husband's turn to go do his work, but really the work needs to be done together. That's the big lie guys. So please comment below. Let us know what you think. It might be hard to hear. Sorry, but this is our experience in 20 years working with couples. What is driving couples apart? And again, it's also the therapists that are advising this, unfortunately. Um, so therapists watching, please, you know, get some skills and training in uh, perhaps the relational paradigm. So no, you can't just go to a mountaintop and, and do ayahuasca or whatever it's called and fix your marriage. You have to stick in the relationship paradigm for a little bit longer. And we want to help make that possible. So, yeah, and it doesn't look ultimately a relationship will only succeed if you have two willing partners willing to do the work. It's not always the therapist's fault, but there's a lot that therapists do. We can talk about on the videos that that's potentially damaging, giving people negative, not planting giving, seeds of doubt. seeds of doubt, not giving couples hope. And we find that with if there's if it's a willing couple, there's so much that can be done differently to make the relationship work, and it's so much easier to make it work. And unfortunately. We find a lot of couples that are naively going to going for help, wanting to make it work, and it just gets worse in therapy, and they wind up getting divorced. And it does seem like a lot of it is from that selfish paradigm of self growth and self care, and it's all about the self. And yeah, it's a lot more exciting. It's a lot more right. cool to do the self work than the painful marriage. The hard work. work. Yeah. yeah, the hard work. Yeah, but it's really more in the end. It's it's definitely more gratifying. You know, to spend your life with someone, to be with someone, to raise a family together with someone. Um, these are all things that are gratifying in the end. And not only that, actually actualizing your full potential, which is really what you are aiming to do with all the self-growth. Yeah. More on that later. So thank you so much for watching. We're very excited to bring you another topic in couples work, marriage counseling. This is our most favorite thing to talk about. It is our mission to help keep couples together and happy. I'm an adult child of divorce, lots of drama, lots of pain from childhood, um, growing up in a reactive home with, you know, divorced parents. And this is really my life's work. This is why we founded the Marriage Restoration Project to help families. And we really look forward to sharing more with you. Please let us know in the comments also what you'd like to hear more about in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Be sure to hit like and notification buttons to, to find out our next video. Stay in touch. See you soon. Take care. Bye.